Derek William Bentley had a rough time as a child and as a young adult. April 1938, five-year-old Derek fell 15 feet, that's five metres, from a lorry and hit his head on the pavement, which was allegedly the cause of his subsequent epilepsy. To add to Derek's bad luck, the house that he lived in with his parents during World War II was bombed during an air raid. It collapsed, leaving Derek with serious head injuries and severe concussion. 1944, Derek, aged 11, attended Norbury Manor Secondary School, just north of Croydon. He'd failed his 11 plus. March 1948, Derek Bentley and another boy were arrested for theft. September 1948, Derek was sentenced to serve three years in Kingswood's approved school near Bristol. While at Kingswood, they did several diagnostic tests on Bentley. The results showed his mental age was estimated about 10 years, 4 months. His actual age was 15 years, 6 months at the time. An IQ test showed Derek's score at 66 points. 28th of July 1950. Derek was released from Kingswood School and became a bit of a recluse for the rest of that year. March 1951. Derek was employed by a furniture removal firm, but forced to leave after he injured his back. 11th of February 1952, Derek was deemed unfit for national service due to his ECG test. They also found levels of low intelligence. May 1952, Derek was employed by Croydon Corporation as a waste collector. But for unsatisfactory performance, he was de demoted to a street cleaner in July 1952. By September, the corporation had fired Derek William Bentley. 2nd of November 1952. Derek Bentley, now aged 19, and his friend Christopher Craig, aged 16, broke into a London warehouse. The lads had decided to rob the warehouse. Craig went armed with a revolver. Bentley was armed with a sheath knife and a knuckle duster. On Craig's instructions, Bentley did not want to carry them. The two were seen entering the premises by a girl in the house opposite the warehouse. She told her parents what she had seen. Her father then went to the nearest telephone box and called the police. Bentley and Craig's then went on to the flat roof of the building, Barlow and Parker's warehouse in Tanworth Road, Croydon and hid behind a lift housing. Detective Sergeant Frederick Fairfax climbed up the drain pipe onto the roof and managed to grab hold of Bentley. Craig shouted defiantly at the detective and Bentley managed to break Fairfax's grip. At this point, Bentley is supposed to have shouted, let him have it, Chris. This became a phrase of much argument. Did Bentley mean let him have the gun or did he mean shoot him? Both Craig and Bentley denied those words were ever spoken. Christopher Craig reiterated this some 40 years later in a statement in 1991. Craig had then fired the gun, grazing the police officer's shoulder. Despite being wounded, Fairfax continued after Bentley and managed to finally arrest him. Bentley told Fairfax that Craig had a Colt 45 and plenty of ammunition. Following the arrival of more police officers in support, a group was sent onto the roof of the building. The first policeman to appear on the roof was Police Constable Sidney George Miles, aged 42. PC Miles was immediately shot by Craig in the head. He died instantly. After exhausting his supply of bullets, Craig leapt from the roof onto the road some 30 feet below. He landed badly, fracturing his spine and left wrist. Craig was then arrested. After his arrest, Eric Bentley was assessed by a psychiatrist while being held at Brixton Prison. More IQ tests were carried out and administered on him and he was classified as borderline feeble-minded with verbal scores of 71 and an IQ of 87. They deemed Bentley to have a reading age of four years and six months. 9th of December 1952. Craig and Bentley were both charged with murder and appeared at the Old Bailey in London. 
It was clear that even if Craig was found guilty of murder, he could not be sentenced to death, being aged only 16. He was below the minimum age of 18 set for ex executions in Britain. However, Derek Bentley was over 18 of age and could be sentenced to death. And indeed, he was. The case appeared to be a relatively simple one for the prosecution. However, as the trial progressed before Lord Chief Justice Goddard at the Old Bailey, the prosecution case appeared far less certain. The police seemed unsure how many shots were fired and by whom. A ballistics expert failed to positively identify Craig's gun as the weapon that had fired the bullet that killed PC Miles. Also, what was meant by Bentley's phrase, let him have it, Chris? Did he indeed mean for Craig to hand over the gun to the officers and to surrender? Or did he mean to shoot the officer? What was clear was that Derek Bentley was, quote, illiterate and mentally subnormal. He was ill-prepared to undergo cross-examination and did not present a good image to the jury, not surprisingly considering his mental age of 11. The jury took just 75 minutes to find both Craig and Bentley guilty of PC Miles' murder. Due to his being below 18 at the time of the offence, Craig was sentenced to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. Bentley was sentenced to death. Various appeals highlighted the ambiguous evidence, Bentley's mental age and the fact that he did not fire the fatal shot. These were all rejected by the Home Secretary at appeal. January 1953. Detective Sergeant Frederick Fairfax was awarded the George Cross for his gallantry. In addition, Police Constables Norman Harrison Page and James MacDonald were awarded the George Medal. Police Constable Robert Jaggs, the British Empire Medal, and the Police Constable Sidney George Miles was posthumously awarded the Queen's Police Medal for gallantry. 28th of January 1953. Derek Bentley was hanged at London's Wandsworth Prison at 9am by executioner Albert Pierpoint. Interesting fact, Wandsworth was the site of 135 executions between 1878 and 1961. Christopher Craig served 10 years in prison before being released in 1963. He settled in Buckinghamshire and became a plumber. Little else is known about Christopher Craig's early life. Since Bentley's execution in January 1953, there have been numerous campaigns to obtain a posthumous pardon for Bentley. In 1991, the public were surprised when the Home Secretary of the time, Kennedy Clark, rejected a report by the Metropolitan Police stating that there were reasonable doubts in this case for a review. 30th of July, 1998. The Court of Appeal finally overturned the controversial conviction of Derek Bentley who had been hanged 45 years previously. In an unprecedented and very damning attack, the Lord Chief Justice Lord Bingham ruled that his predecessor and Bentley's trial judge, Lord Chief Justice Goddard, had denied Bentley that fair trial that is the birthright of every British citizen. In a 52-page judgment, Lord Bingham placed the blame for the miscarriage of justice with Lord Goddard describing Lord Goddard as blatantly prejudiced. Lord Bingham concluded that he had misdirected the jury and that in his summing up he had put unfair and undue pressure on the jury to convict Bentley. You can see the full judgment at www.murderuk.com. After the hearing, Chris Craig broke his years of silence on the matter, releasing a statement which read, Today, after 46 years, the conviction of Derek Bentley has been quashed and his name cleared. While I am grateful and relieved about this, I am saddened that it has taken these 46 years for the authorities in the country to admit the truth. I am truly sorry that my actions on the 2nd of November 1952 caused so much pain and misery for the family of PC Miles, who died that night doing his duty. Also for the Bentley family, I regret this. 
I regret that Derek's sister Iris, who fought for all those years for Derek's pardon, died recently before the appeal was concluded. Finally, I apologise to my family who have had to endure press attention over all these years. You can read more about this case and many more cases at www.murderuk.com. Thank you for listening.